Okay, let's start our adventure, man, because I have a brand new inbox, um, FCA202. Yep, I'm not going to say the best $15 I've ever spent. We have French, we have not French, um, Britannish, and um, Germish. And it is 120 volts, so bonus soda, I guess. Um, I'm assuming this is going to be bus power. Yeah, it is. But yeah, this this is more of a uh, not more of a it's absolutely a analog to digital converter. There are no preamps in this device, so you're not going to be sticking a microphone directly into it. I mean, you could, and it just wouldn't work. But you can power some speakers. Let's see what we have inside of. It opens from the, that's odd. Mm. All right. Well, we have what appears to be two air wire cables. Um, hmm. I wonder what the story is. We must investigate. How do I open this? There we go. Come on. There we are. Yeah. Why do we have two? Oh. Okay, so this is a 400 to 400, and 400 to 800. Yeah, it's like a little mini connector, but yeah, that was awfully nice of them. It's, hmm, if a CD we'll never use, and um, some vintage music production software that, okay. Oh, no. oh, well, yeah, let's just drag this guy out. It's made of metal. It's heavy. It has some weight to it. Mm, look at that. that that's a... That, that's like a um, supersized um, packet of things you don't get to eat. Never make tea with that stuff. It's nasty. Uh, F control. All right, bunch of different languages. You can tell this is vintage by the um, Behringer logo. It's got the old ear on it. Ah, so many people. Okay. Two in, two out, 24 bits, and firewire. All right, that's brilliant. So what do we have? Not much. Um, you have firewire, and you have firewire pass through, which is good. So you can keep chaining them. Balanced and unbalanced out and unbalanced in Kensington Lock and optional power supply. Oh, that's plastic. Boo! The rest of it's metal. Ha! Huh. Well, at least we get a level control for the headphones and focus, power and firewire. And FC, don't eat wheelie bins. Hmm. Pretty standard. I don't think we're going to have much else in here. I'm assuming this is going to be the power supply. Jeez. What? Okay. Why does this have a that in it? That is, that is what they call a chunky boy. Let's take a look, man. Um, You have my... Oh, look, it's a sticker. A vintage Behringer sticker. More instructions. There's a lot of instructions for this very, very bog standard interface, man. Um, operating manual. All right. I always like to go through these and see if we have any vintage screenshots. Kind of. All right. Um, okay. This is a good example of what this device is used for. You know, if you have a guitar or microphone running into a mixer, and so you just have an analog mixer that you need to connect to the computer, this is what you would use. You would take the line out from the mixer, um, you know, left, right channel, or just single mono, and feed it into this. You know, you gotta have a preamp going into this thing. So, this is the Rosetta manual, I guess. I guess. Anything in here with higher? No. Nope. Alright. That's all that is. That's just an extra chunky manual. Okay. Well, we've solved that mystery. On to the power supply. Do you contain anything fun or in bubble wrap? Hmm. Ah, uh, there it is. What is this? Uh, 120 volts, 60 hertz, 6.5 watts. All right, so it's standard 12 volts. 
nothing special about that barrel connector then. But this is going to be bus powered, so unless you're worried about draining a laptop battery, and just plug it into your firewire with your firewire cable, it'll power itself. Kind of brilliant. Okay, uh, let's get this thing plugged into the computer and see what it does. Okay, we have it hooked up directly to the system, and good news everyone, Pavu Control sees it. We have all the options, as you would with any other uh, sound card that you would plug in. Stereo in, out, multi-channel duplex, um, input, output. Everything works as what you would expect, and yes, you can just um, launch YouTube or VLC and whatever, and it will work just the same. But I always like to go into Ulsa Mixer, because every now and then you have uh, some type of control over the device. <sighs> And we just don't with this one. But hey, it's always worth checking. We're going to tap the configure button because there's a couple of things I want to show you. Starting off with um, trying to use the kernel driver. This is um, just built in, you know, when you plugged it in, it's working with um, also in Pulse Audio. But we're going to try like a 256 48K. We have to start and you can see the X runs. They immediately start climbing just right out of the gate. You know something's up. You do. Well, the thing that's up is, for whatever reason, the Jack Pulse Audio Bridge just does not play well with the ELSA stack. But you can see, I mean, it's hooked up. You know, you have two in, two out. And unfortunately, unfortunately, let me stop this. Um, let me go into configure. Like, maybe the buffer size has nothing to do with the buffer size. Not Nothing at all. I can do this at 128. It's going to climb just the same. Boom. I stop the bridge. Everything's fine. So if I just want to use the ULSA drivers for recording, which you will need to do um, in place of the FATO drivers, this is how you got to do it. You're just not going to be able to use your um, Pulse Audio Jack bridge with the ULSA stack while you have it set up for recording. Now, what you will have to do... Um, if you want to use the Pulse Audio Jack bridge and that type of configuration is I'm just set it to 128, you're gonna to have to use the FATO drivers um, by selecting Firewire and let's start. Look at that. Perfect. No problem. We'll go to Katia. Launched. Connected. That's it. So keep that in mind. Coming up first, we have the Amazon Basics uh, Dynamic Microphone. This is uh, currently like between $20 and $25, depending on what day of the week it is, but it is running through the art TPS2, then into the Behringer FCA 202. Coming up next, we have the OSP High Performance DL330. This is a instrument microphone, but it'll work in a pinch. It's a dynamic. It's hooked up directly to the art TPS2, which is running into the Behringer FCA 202. All right, now it's time for the Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser microphone, which requires phantom power. It is um, being provided by the art TPS2, which is running into the Behringer FCA 202. And last, but most definitely not least, we have the Golden Age Project D2 Dynamic Microphone, which is, again, running into the art TPS2, and that is running into our Behringer FCA 202. <laughs>
Okay, this is a Audor studio session for Linux Gamecast Weekly. I've loaded up uh, Vin and Jordan on the FCA 202. We're looking for X runs, and it looks like it's going to be all clear. Yeah. Now, taking a look at round trip latency, 44. Uh, everything's roughly where you would expect it. It's a little slower than some other FireWire interfaces. Same goes for 48 and 96, um, all the way down to 2.89 at 16. Yeah, inspection and teardown time, baby. Let's rip it apart. Let's break it where we can never put it back together again. <laughs> but first, we have to hold on to the screwdriver, right? Not much to it, man. Uh, there are four screws on the top and two on the bottom. I don't think it's going to be too difficult to get inside. The top just comes right off. So I think we're going to have to get this front faceplate off, which requires us to pry. Hmm. Like that. But that's not all the prying we're going to do. Nope. No, sir. It's Behringer. Surprisingly well built, so I'm going to have to chip the paint. And by chip the paint, I'm just going to shove the screwdriver in and wiggle, 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 wiggle. Pop. There we go. But our adventure is not done yet. If we truly want to free the Smurfy board, I'm going to have to get these four screws. One, two, three. Yeah, four. There's still Phillips, easy to get at. Nothing difficult. One more to go. And across the line. Come on. Okay, take two. One more turn, three more turns. Come out. Hey, there we go. Now we can free the board. We can get a look at it. I can hold it up to the camera and point at things. Isn't that exciting? That's what I'm going to do. I bet that's what I'm going to do. Let's see if that's what I do. Okay. Well, I've definitely held the board up. Well, get it in frame, old man. There we go. Yeah, there's not much going on here. We have a clock. That's going to be the Altera. That's logic I see. That is an Oxford uh, FW970. That's your audio chipset. And on the back there, with a V, that's just a fire wire. Um, well, not one with the V. On the opposite side, the TI, that's the uh, FireWire controller. It's a TBS41AB2. You just see those in a lot of things. Not much to them, but they get the job done. Really, I should say, that's a common chip people have to replace, because if you plug your FireWire cable in backwards, and by plug, I mean shove and force, that chip lets out the magic smoke. Yeah, on the front, we have the lead indicators, and that's just your uh, trim for your headphone. Back of the board's pretty clean. Not much going on there. And, yeah, barrel connector. It's your input, sun balanced, balanced out, and fire wire in and pass through. Caps look like they're in pretty good shape. By pretty good shape, they all look brand new, which they should because it's brand new, even though it's, you know, more than a decade old. Modern electronics. But yeah, that, let's get some test pads on it. So I looked that up, and that's a TC4410N. It's just a programmable logic IC. That's going to be the traffic cop for the board. And if I was going to do anything with this, which I'm not, um, yeah, X13 is where I would attempt to give it to it. But yeah, and the um, FW970 using the Oxford chipset. That's something that you see in like an Apogee Duet. Pretty neat. And that's it. That's everything I could find out about the F-Control, um, the FCA202. So let's talk about what works and what knows. Let's start. Let's start with the good stuff, man. What works? Um, it works as a sound card with also. Yay. It's bus powered. Ooh. And if we're going to be perfectly honest, the analog to digital conversion, it's good enough in a pinch. If you need to use it, it will give you usable recordings. But we need to talk about what gnomes because the audio most definitely glitches when you're using the Fado drivers. That's a problem. Then if you're going to be using the also drivers and you try to use Pulse Audio Bridge, completely unusable. The inputs, the inputs are unbalanced. 
That's a negative. Outputs are balanced. So it's got that going for it. And it is limited to 96K, which some people will complain about. Now, the biggest hangup with the FCA 202 is needing to use the ALSA drivers for recording since um, the, the FADO drivers just have issues. You'll get a intermittent beep, beep, just random clicks that I was noticing with um, Jackbox. Now, here's the hangup. Here's how it's going to happen. A lot of people like to use their interface um, as a sound card, and I've given up trying to convince them otherwise. So what you'd typically do is initialize the device with Jack, then you'd use um, Pulse Audio Jack Bridge to connect to desktop apps, Firefox, VLC, anything like that, your gaming, and um, that way you could use your desktop stuff, but you can still use your digital audio workstations like Outdoor and uh, Bitvig and stuff like that with Jack without having to change stuff in and out all the time. With this, you have to use the Fado drivers um, if you want to use your Pulse Audio. So you'd have to start Jack with the Fado drivers using the Firewire stack in order to bridge the um, Pulse Audio Jack module. Then, if you want to record, you're going to have to close Jack. Well, stop Jack, I should say. Then um, relaunch it using the ALSA drivers in order to record so you don't get any audio glitches or distortion. So um, you will constantly be switching things up, forcing you to use this more like an interface and less like a sound card. So what should you pay for the FCA 202? Well, I... Pick this one up, new in box, brand new, for $15. And that's the absolute most you should be paying for one of these, period. This is a very basic. When it was released, it was still very basic. Digital to analog converter. Two line in, two line out. And um, you're not going to be connecting anything to this unless it is first coming from the business end of a preamp, like um, be it a mixer or a standalone preamp like that. So there's not really much of a use case for it. You do have a headphone jack. All I can say is if you have a, I don't know if you find one and you currently have Firewire set up in your system. Hey, it does. But I answered the question I had, does it know about a Linux? And the answer to that is, well, kind of, for the most part, it can be made to work. Um, not quite as fluid as you would expect. Now, I do want to point out, I have this on the desk. This is just a pile, um, hum destroyer, ground lift. Ended up having to use this with my um, preamp simply because I was getting a lot of um, like brown hum, a little bit of noise. Didn't notice it uh, when I was going in direct with the guitar. So keep that in mind. This could be like a little added thing you might have to throw in on top of everything else. But that's it. For the F Control Audio FCA 202 Firewire Audio Interface. It, it was a relatively boring adventure. But if you like what we do, we like to keep doing this. I want to show people how to make use of the equipment that they currently have or how to get some stuff on the cheap and whether or not it is truly compatible with Linux. Uh, you can support everything I do here and everything we do at the network at patreon.com forward slash Linux EMCast. You can join these Find Young Cannibals and supporting the show and everything that we do or just share the show or anything like that. Or leave a comment, question, thoughts, hints, allegations. This is kind of like just a YouTube thing. Um, go to the web zone if you want like all the breakdowns with all the charts and stuff. But feel free to leave a comment down there. Okay, that's going to do it. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, get out there. Play some music, record some music, make something awesome. All right. Bye-bye.